Hello everybody! I have Yay. just received my new light up Tesla T. And this is. So, oh, I got a visitor. Say hi, Gene. Got Gino behind me, and I got Vinny in his high chair. But uh, the Tesla T will be going right here. At least underneath, I should say. Um, yes, I do have to clean that off. My car is driven and driven hard. Sees no garage. Only lots of washes, mainly in the summertime. So anyways, we have our Tesla T here. Um, I'm going to have to remove the plastic chrome T that is on the nose cone for my car. Um, this has got 3M tape on both sides, uh, sealed acrylic. Uh, looks like it's got the resistor and everything, or maybe not built right in. Um, I, I'm i probably going to do a direct wire. I want this sucker on all the time. Uh, so I uh, haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that yet. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do that. But uh, let's just take a quick look. My goodness, Vinny, are you loud tonight? Yep. Strip off a little more. And for those of you who keep saying that my videos need to be a little more professional, guess what? Um, with, by the end of this week, I will have a spare bedroom cleared out. And I have green screen paint. I am going to paint the whole room in green screen paint so we can have lots of K Man video goodness. So, there's still a little snow on my clamps from this morning. Wow, maybe I will have to put a resistor in there because that sucker is bright. I bet you guys can, can't even see that. No, you can't have that. No, I'm not going to give you that. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Let's try... Turning off the light here. Turn off. Okay, that's with the lights in the room off. And of course, uh, the camera compensates for light. But um, all right, well, I'm going to start cleaning off the nose cone of my car and start installing it. So, um, got. Uh, the nose cone cleaned up a bit, and man, these things really do take a beating being on the front of the, the nose of the car there. Um, but very durable nonetheless. Now, it'd be real neat if we could get uh, this long chrome strip uh, LED lit as well. So, uh, there's a few different ways that the uh, T can be removed, as it is just a stick-on, um, similar to how the lighted one will be. Um, uh, one method that I like is using waxed dental floss as you can slowly get it under there and you just gotta be really gentle and take your time and you just slowly work your way through okay now because uh, I'm not gonna bore everybody at least not in this video um, once you have it off, uh, because the lighted T will actually be going between the chrome. The chrome T will be going on top, with the lighted T underneath. Now, because of that, you'll have to be putting the the, the new T has a 3M adhesive on both sides, so you'll have to be getting off all the residue from the and adhesive from the uh, old adhesive. Uh, 
Goo Gone works very good. It's, smells like oranges. Takes it all gently off. And I have never had Goo Gone harm paint on a vehicle before. And I mean, I've used it on plenty of vehicles. If anybody's ever heard of the uh, Zap electric cars, the little three wheeled pieces of crap. Um, I, I will admit I used to be a dealer of those. Not proud of it. <laughs> but uh, when that's pretty much the only commercially available vehicle that runs on electric that can exceed 25 miles an hour in all, almost all states, uh, you do what you can. And uh, I had one that was the actual, had all the zebra stripes on it. And, um, and the customer wanted that particular car, didn't want to wait for me to order one, it would, would have been there in a week. Uh, instead he wanted all the zebra stripes removed. That took about eight hours. Burned up two hair dryers, heating up all that vinyl. There you go. Um, so, and then Goo Gone. We had to Goo Gone all the residue off. So, there we go. Tease removed. Or at least the top portion. And guess what? We didn't have to use pliers, um, uh, plastic tools, anything. Just a piece of waxed, waxed uh, dental floss. Ooh, this one's mint. Ooh, I like mint. I cut myself a long piece just in case. Um, yeah, works. So I'm going to remove this and uh, gently get all that glue off and I'll see you guys in the update. Alright, everything's cleaned off. Got all the glue removed. And uh, got that nice and clean. Now one thing, uh, Goo Gone and many of the other cleaners uh, do leave like an oily residue so um, now I don't usually condone this but uh, you can use something like Windex or uh, dish soap and a little water on a, on a microfiber cloth to clean that and um, now either one of those dish soap or Windex actually strips wax the wax off of a vehicle so that's why you never wash a car with Windex or using dish soap. Uh, now in this case uh, given that this is a just a painted plastic piece I don't really care about that since I wax the crap out of my car anyways. In fact I wash the whole thing down nice and clean uh, and uh, once I'm done and this is back on the vehicle uh, the whole car is getting a wax anyways so I don't really mind too much. Um, so now that we have that done, you got uh, we got to mark the holes and drill some holes. And then I can start uh, seeding the pieces. All right, here we are for the moment of truth. Uh, I'm going to use my boost box to uh, light up the tea at full 12 volt power. Now um, I have a fuse. I put an inline fuse box here. Um, I'm just not in the mood to walk out to my truck that's parked on the street for the last eight months since I got the Tesla in zero degree weather to go get a spare fuse. Um, so for the time being, I just kind of jerry rigged it up a little bit. But, uh, Ready and go. This thing is bright. Off. Um. I 
not sure yet how I like it reflecting off of there. So I'll just have to wait and see what it looks like on the car. Uh, probably can't tell from the video how bright this really is, but I am squinting standing here. That is how bright this thing is. And I think I may just put a resistor on it, bring the brightness down just a hair. And I want to leave this bugger on all the time. Number of LEDs. I can I'll actually measure out the current tomorrow. I'll go grab my multimeter out of my tool bin in the garage and uh, my clamp on amp meter, I should say, DC amp meter. And um, volts times amps equals watts. See exactly how what this draws. And it should be practically nothing. So. I have to find out if these have a regulator in them. Already couldn't tell because the 3M tape made it a little hard to see what was going on. But uh, installation was fairly simple and straightforward. Um, you already saw the uh, other parts taken off. It, uh, for the most part, uh, the two holes. There we go. Two holes, and then um, I put heat shrink tube on there. I soldered the connection. That was just a little extra there. I soldered the connection between the fuse box and the two positive connectors, and I just left the poke me a little son of a gun. I left the negatives uh, twisted together. Um, I am going to have to put an extension on there, and I'm not sure if. If I'm going to use a switch and what kind of switch, um, a couple different options. I'm thinking option one, just wire it directly to the 12 volt posts behind the nose cone there. Option two, put an on off switch. So if I really wanted to, I could just flip an on off switch under the front. Option three, put a on off toggle, multi mode toggle. Uh, with three settings, either on, or excuse me, of course, on off, um, on that with a re inline resistor to uh, bring the voltage down so it's not as bright, um, and then another on that's just full full blast. Let's just see. Take some. Uh, 18650s, uh, same size that are powering the Model S. Let's just see what we got here. That's not going to work. That's... No joy. There we go. Quite a bit dimmer. Uh, this is at uh, 8.4 volts. So yeah, actually I think I may just want to put something in, in line here with the switch. Contemplating. 8.4 looks fine for normal usage, and uh, I'm not sure if I want to spend the money on the electronics to do a remote control. At least not until maybe more potential upgrades are out. Let's zoom this out. Oops, wrong way. Uh, 
Maybe uh, since the bottom of the car is flat, maybe some LED strips going from front to back. They could be a real low level white. Um, or legally they could be yellow. Or red if they're tied in with the braking light system. So, possibilities. I'm very impressed. I will finish off this video. Uh, I'll have a follow up video uh, with this actually installed on the car. I guess got to get a couple ring terminals. And uh, stop by the shack. Did they ever change their name to the shack? Or is it still Radio Shack? I don't know. I never go there anymore. Uh, too excited to wait a month for a couple of uh, resistors to come from China. Although, for the $3 that I'd spend for, what, one, two, or three resistors at... Uh, Radio Shack, I could probably get a couple hundred from China. Deal Extreme is awesome. So, and I actually like I actually like popping up a bit. I'll have to look at that tomorrow when I'm not so tired. Um, I actually like how the T now is really raised off the uh, the body. And I think even if they didn't light it at factory, um, just having it raised up like that just makes it pop from angles just qu quite a bit more. So, not bad. So i got to thank uh, Artsy for uh, putting this whole thing together here. Awesome project. And I can't wait until the lighted T on the back, of, or the lighted chrome strip on the back of the car. Uh, the only thing I foresee being a problem with that is the leaky tail lights on so many people's vehicles. Uh, to pull the tail lights off to get those replaced or fixed uh, requires pulling that chrome strip off. Now, if you can get it off without breaking it, great. Most of the time, they end up getting broken. And you get a new one put on. So if you just spent all that money to have LEDs put in it and a lot of headache. Kiss that all goodbye. It's the only downside I see to that. But man, does this nose cone take a beating. Yeah, at least they're replaceable. Hmm. Well, that's it for tonight. Have a good one.